particular, there was uh, a city press conference while there was a county update. We were told that the city's press schedule is irrelevant to the counties. I'm also wondering what the coordination is between Erie County and other municipalities in Erie County, Amherst, Chittawaga, Tonawanda, um, especially when it comes to people finding their cars. Why isn't there one central database, and why is each municipality then responsible for helping folks find their car instead of putting it all in one spot? Uh, we have an elected officials call every morning. We had one this morning again uh, with leadership from all of the municipalities. Uh, the city of Buffalo was not on it today. They generally have not been on it. Serious, I, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Uh, the issues with coordination, I, there's a reason why the state and the county have come in and taken over operations. I know the mayor's not gonna be happy to hear it, but we took over an entire segment, one third of the city of Buffalo because we know that we could get in there and clean it very quickly. The state is basically doing the same thing with equipment from other areas. Uh, I've already had discussions with my staff about what it would take for the county to take over all snow, uh, snow cleaning operations in the future. Uh, and I've had that discussion with New York State as well because I think it's apparent that it's time for it to happen or at least a discussion on the future. The mayor's not gonna be happy to hear about it, but storm after storm after storm after storm, the city, unfortunately, is the last one to be opened, and that shouldn't be the case. It's embarrassing, to tell you the truth. And that's why so we're gonna continue to work on it. Ed, I'm gonna go on to the next question. Uh, uh, we have, a, the next hand was raised by Dominic Lavallo of uh, Spectrum, and then Dave McKinley of Channel 2. Hey, Mark. Uh, so, obviously, a big part of that is your hope is to have Buffalo open possibly by 9 a.m. tomorrow. Oh, uh, that said, there, with the driving ban going on, several days now, uh, people will need prescription, people will need food. Um, is getting food, going to a grocery store considered essential travel? And if not, people who are in the situation of needing prescriptions, needing food, mm -hmm. is there a service that they can call or is provided so they can get the necessary resources? Uh, we understand the predicament that people are in. Our goal, our goal is to keep as many vehicles off the streets. We don't want people to go without prescriptions. You can call 858-SNOW if there are prescriptions that need to be delivered. Uh, we know that people are running out of food. Uh, we do know, we are delivering MREs and water to warming centers uh, that are in the city of Buffalo. Uh, I, I, I'm afraid of what might happen if we said go ahead and go to the grocery store and drive because then we'll have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of vehicles driving in areas that really you, we, we can't handle uh, because of the issues with snow, because there's giant piles that are being moved onto streets to then be picked up by dump trucks. It's, it's still not safe in that situation. Uh, I would suggest that uh, uh, individuals uh, reach out to neighbors if they can't drive, uh, find uh, uh, ways of, of us, if there are ways that we, we are, you know, I know people want to replenish their stock. There's a reason why we deliver MREs to keep people help and feed them. Uh, I, I, I just avoiding the situation where we have possibly tens of thousands of people trying to get on the road uh, at a time when we, we just don't have the capability of handling that traffic and then it's a standstill. As Bill noted earlier, in one of the sections that we were responsible for, we were trying to clear one of the mains for two lanes and we had to pull off the heavy equipment because it was too dangerous uh, to be there with the people that were walking in the vehicles that were driving so we moved to side streets where we could easily more easily do the work and, and if, if more vehicles get on the road it's just going to hamper our efforts. Uh, Dave McKinley, Channel 2. David, are you, you need to unmute your phone. Oh, hi there. I can, okay. Yes, I can. Go ahead, Dave. intriguing idea you just mentioned about plowing city streets, but first I, I'd like to ask you about something that just won't go away now that we've had a few days and you've been clarified. There are people still wondering, Buffalo Bills played, they landed in Rochester, they were allowed to travel during the travel ban. They yep, were not allowed to travel. travel. They were not well, allowed to travel. They did. They, they did. Oh, I understand that. They actually reached out to Erie County for, in the Sheriff's Office for an escort and we said no, there's a driving ban. And at that time, it was actually heavy snow still. I don't want anybody to think that Erie County gave preferential treatment to the bills. I'm glad 
that they landed in Rochester, but there was not preferential treatment given to the football team. I want to put that out there right now because I know they reached out to the sheriff's office and the sheriff's office said, no, we are not going to give you an escort. There's a driving ban going on. Sheriff's deputies are responding to life threatening situations and we're not going to do an escort for the football team. Simple as that. And, and they weren't considered essential workers. That no, they were not as much as, as much as they're essential for our mental health when they win, they are not essential workers. Now, if they wanted, if they've got capability to drive a CDL licenses and things like that, and they want to get behind a rig, we'll, we'll, we'll bring them on. We'll take them on. I know. I don't know if Josh, the guys want to start shoveling driveways, go ahead. Be my guest. Uh, but they're not, they're not, the bills are not considered essential workers. Uh, and I, I, I think it's important that people understand that we gave them no, uh, no, no free treatment. Okay. And, and this, this idea you just brought up, just to, are you talking about a complete takeover? And practically, how would that work? Would you just take all their equipment? Or would we're, you we're, this is a discussion we'll have. And I think it's going to be certainly something that we need to when we have these major storms consider such that the county and others are, are responsible for districts inside the city of Buffalo when we, it's, I'm not gonna do it when, we, and I don't think it's appropriate if there's one inch of snow on the ground, but if we have these major storms, we're, we're gonna have to come in there and, and we know we're gonna have to do this because uh, we have the capability, we have the money, and uh, we can afford to hire the contractors, and uh, we have the capability, we have the emergency operations center. I don't, do not believe the city has ever had an emergency operations center open during this event nor the last one, uh, and uh, we, will, uh, we will do what it takes in the future to ensure that our community is open as quickly as possible. And if that means we've got to hire more trucks and get more contractors and bring in more people to handle an area that the Erie County has never been responsible for, we'll do it. I just don't want to see this anymore. I'm sick of it. I'm a city resident myself. I live in the city of Buffalo, and it pains me to see the other 25 towns and two small cities open in times when the city isn't. The city has its own problems that are different than the smaller communities because of the size of the streets and the parking issues. I understand that. But we have more capability than the city. And if we have to, working with the state, we will find a way to get through these storms quicker by taking over operations if need be. And I know the mayor's probably not thrilled to hear it. I don't care anymore. I want it done. Uh, I think the next hand up was Kelly Holland. Kelly, you need me. Hi, County Executive. Um, it, it appears that um, games for the Sabres, the Bandits, um, are still scheduled uh, to go on for the next few days. Uh, yes. Will you guys be in talks if the, the driving ban is lifted to have those, you know, be teams only, no fans? Or uh, once that driving ban is lifted, will downtown be equipped to handle an influx of people for games and then first night? Uh, I can't speak on behalf of first night. I don't know what that city runs first night. Uh, the, we are monitoring. Uh, we know the Sabres have a game, I think, tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, if the driving ban is still in effect, of course, there would be no game. Well, they could hold the game. If they, if the airport is going to be open. If the team came in, they could hold the game, but there would be nobody that should be driving down to attend the game. Uh, if the driving ban is lifted and there's parking available, then yes, I guess they would play the game and people would attend. Uh, you, when you drive, you lift the driving ban, that means it's safe enough to do these types of activities. But I can't, all I can say is I know the driving ban is going to be in effect through the remainder of today. Uh, ben Tijimoto. I know it's still kind of early, but do you have any data in terms of, you know, the deaths and the power outages, whether they affected any area more than others? Uh, well, I do know with the deaths, I don't know, if I, I don't, I'm not certain if I said it earlier. Uh, 26 individuals were located and found in the city of Buffalo. Seven, I did mention this, seven were suburbs, which included Amherst, Chicawaga, and Depew, and one is unknown. They're still trying to confirm the uh, location where and who brought it in. 
Uh, so uh, it definitely with regards to deaths, it, it, it dramatically affected the city of Buffalo. I do know when it came to power outages, the vast majority of them were in the city of Buffalo. Uh, I'm glad that they've reduced the power outages to the level that they're at right now. It's tremendous work by all to do that, and especially considering we're talking about frozen substations where they were just flooded with snow and transformers froze. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, it was the city of Buffalo that seemed to get the brunt of not only the power outages, but um, more specifically and sadly, the deaths. I mean, more specifically within the city, was there a certain location of the city in which that you noticed these were happening? Uh, I, I do, there, there is, in the report that we get from the Emmy's office, a breakdown of where the body was found. And uh, I just don't off the top of my head have a, a, a breakdown to be able to do that, but uh, eventually, I think we'll be able to break it down probably by council districts, but I, I, I don't want to say anything that would cause that. Okay. And uh, uh, we have uh, the last question with his hand raised is Stephen Louie. Hey, County Executive. Uh, thanks very much. I had a question on the decision making um, behind instituting the travel ban uh, on Friday morning. Kind of talk, talk us through the decision making process there. Was there any discussion of, of going earlier with that? And, and if so, why not? Uh, there's, there was discussion starting on Thursday once we declared that the state of emergency would go in effect at 7 a.m. There was some initial thought that this ban would not reach our area until uh, 10 a.m. Uh, that, of course, changed when it hit around 8.30. There was also discussion about not doing it at 7 or before because we wanted third shift workers to be able to get home uh, at a time when we knew it was going to be rain and it was rain. I mean, it dropped dramatically. The snow really went from rain to sleet to snow in a matter of less than five minutes around 8.40 uh, and then it started snowing. It wasn't horrible at that point. Uh, we didn't really get the bad, bad uh, whiteouts until uh, right around 10 o'clock, uh, which of course was after the ban. Uh, but we, we have to take a lot into the consideration. If, uh, if anyone's to be blamed, you can blame me. I'm the one who has to make the final call on behalf of the county. Uh, I've been reading some books lately when I had time. I was reading them when I had COVID and uh, on, on a number of things, including a, a biography on JFK and uh, there's the famous quote from JFK following the Bay of Pigs, which is, uh, victory has a hundred fathers, defeat is an orphan, but someone has to bear responsibility. And if you want to bear anybody responsibility, bear me. I'll take it. I'm the one who has to sign the state of emergency. I'm the one who has to sign the order. Every mayor, every uh, supervisor can do the same. Uh, I was the first one to put the driving ban in effect at 9.30, to my knowledge. Uh, we announced it around 8.45, going effect at 9.30. But if, uh, if, if people want to point the finger, I'll take it, because I'm the one in this position that has to assume that responsibility and authority. And as Harry Truman says, the buck stops here. And uh, uh, we, we follow through. We talk to professionals. We talk to the state. We talk to our friends in law enforcement. Talk to the Weather Service. And if there's criticism that uh, it wasn't done right, well, I'll take it. I'll bear responsibility. Uh, Bill has to make a statement. I don't know what it is, but go ahead, Bill. <clears throat> now, I'd just, uh, again, like to clarify the use of the military police is to prevent any accidental death yes. in and around the operating um, equipment that is doing the snow removal operation. They are not to ticket people. Yes. I know there's a lot of confusion out there, you know, um, some, that these military police are in there, they are not. There are people that are traversing the roads because they have to possibly get to get some food, gas, whatever it may be. They are there to protect the safety of those individuals as well as the people that are operating the equipment so there is no accidental deaths. Thank you, William. Uh, yesterday in the press conference, I did note that the military police and New York State Police were to be used for traffic control uh, and also to help prevent looting. Uh, I, I did not say yesterday they were there to ticket. Unfortunately, uh, 
it was put on social media from uh, one of my team that it was tra traffic control and ticketing. We're not there to ticket. We don't want to ticket people at this point. We, we could ticket people and charge them for the costs associated with towing their vehicles. We're not. County's absorbing it, so I want people to understand that. Uh, with that, uh, with no, I see no other hands raised by uh, our reporters, I want to thank all the team here from Erie County for the great work. Uh, we have gone through the uh, great blizzard of 2022. People are calling it the Christmas blizzard already. Uh, and it is devastating, paralyzing. It has taken 34 of our fellow citizens. I offer my deepest condolences and sympathies to the individuals who've lost loved ones at this holiday season. It's just, I mean, it's terrible. I understand it. Every time the Christmas season comes along, people are going to remember the storm and the death of their loved one. And the stories are just heartbreaking. Just heartbreaking. Abdul Sharif, who went out to get food and provisions for his pregnant wife, who's about to give birth, and he didn't make it back home. Just, just, it's terrible. And I just want to say to the people of Erie County, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the work that you did. I'm proud of how you responded. Many, many more lives were saved because of the work of our first responders, our law enforcement, everyone, including you at home, for following and helping others. They call us the city good neighbors. We've proven that, and uh, we will recover. Thank you. Be safe and well.